you can tell what kind of guy a girl likes mm. based on their dessert selections. Interesting. So I what lied. does that mean? I lied. There's no study. <laughs> I, I was going to say. Well, cool. what does that mean? <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of The Family Business with the Alessis, and I'm Steve Alessi. Today you're going to love this podcast because I'm in the studio with, that's hand claps, Gabrielle Alessi. Hello, everybody. Give it up for Gabby. Hello, hello. Oh, hello, hello. First question, Gabby, what's your favorite chocolate? Um, not that one. Mm. I like dark chocolate, but I'll have it for right now. Huh? If it's like a Halloween candy chocolate, then it's going to be Reese's. I'm not going to give you yours because you can't eat with your or talk with your mouth full. That's true. It's not uh, appropriate. I'm going to save them for me here because I think you're going to be doing a lot of talking. I will be. And I'll be listening. Well, tech, not really. I'll be asking you a lot of questions. All right. Second question. What's your favorite dessert? I like a either like a brownie with a... Okay, it's the bonsai brownie from Flanagan's. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> That's my favorite yeah. dessert because it's brownie with a massive two or three oh, massive yeah. vanilla ice cream scoops. And then on top of on the sides to hold the ice cream up are Kit Kats. Oh. And I love and Oreos. That yeah. one I love. I asked you that question because what they said over in one study is that you can tell what kind of guy a girl likes mm. based on their dessert selections. Interesting. So I what lied. does that mean? I lied. There's no study. <laughs> okay. I, I was going to say, well, cool. what does that mean? <laughs> and I don't want to, it's, this isn't you about like me. like sweet, just not too sweet. There you go. This there isn't about go. me. No. This is, actually, we want to talk about dating today, Dad. That's so. exact. See how I ran right up into that? Yes, you did. Right. Good job. So why don't you Tell us a little about this subject matter, why yeah. it came to be, while I enjoy a um, kisses. That's, okay, Go. this is getting weird. But we, <laughs> I wanted to actually, I asked you if we could do this podcast together because about two, three weeks ago, I spoke to the youth and we had a whole series. The entire month of February was called the Rizology series. Do you know what Riz is? Oh, no. Okay, so Riz is like a very famous thing that kids are throwing around today. Like, do you have Riz? Riz. Riz. Now, Dad, yeah. I can tell you, you definitely have Riz because you got mom 30 years ago. Yeah. Riz is like game. Oh. So like you got game. Can you pick a girl up? Then if you can, you have Riz and all of that. So like you Riz them up. So what we did was Rizology, the study of dating, love, and relationships. Oh, come on. So that was the whole idea of the series. And then week two, we talked about dating. And I I had a, a message where we we talked about it, we introduced it, and it was really, really good. The kids really responded to it. But I thought, you know, I'd love to have like a continuation of this conversation mm. and not just because there's a lot of things when it comes to dating that we can't really address. Not not we can't really address, but we don't have all the time in the world to address it because a lot of it is detailed. And so I thought, you know, I'd love to sit with with you and mm -hmm. ask you some of these questions, but when it comes to teenagers, right? dating in the teenage world, because teenagers today are wanting to know when can they date? Wow. And I want to date and I want to text this person and I, I like this person and how is it all going to work out? But frankly, they've been given terrible examples of right. how to do it today. Yeah. Um, coffee break. Ready? Go. Coffee break. Hmm. Okay, go. That's so hot. I know. Wow. I could have kept sure talking while you... sure good in my family business mug. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, you and your sister, Lolo, Gab, uh, Stephanie too, and you got mom in it. Yeah. But you like these goofy TV shows. We do. On dating. Love is Blind. Yeah. The most recent one is Love is Blind. Yeah. I try... To watch it with you, but my manhood just won't. <laughs> it can't survive. Can't survive. I've tried, you know, one episode, half an episode, quarter of an episode, and I'm like, yeah, this is the stupidest thing. It really is. But watching it, they put it on television, mm -hmm. and I don't know how many young people watch it, but it's evidently pretty popular. So somebody is taking an interest in it because yeah. they keep showing these shows. Mm -hmm. 
What's the traditional dating relationship look like, Gabs? Today. Today. So what you're finding is it's you text, you talk, you DM. Most likely the introduction is all going to be via your phone. So what you don't see today, which is interesting because girls complain about it, but girls don't do anything about it because girls don't realize they do have a part to play. Mm -hmm. But they complain that guys aren't making the first move in person. Mm -hmm. So how we hear stories of our grandparents, how you went up to mom and you were like, hey, I want to take you out. You don't have that. Guys aren't walking up to girls. They're DMing them. They're sliding into their DMs or they're texting them to ask them out. So you did air quotes when you said slide. People can't see the air quotes. So what's sliding into their DMs? Sliding into your DMs is me messaging you like, hey, how you doing Mm. in the DMs? And so you slid into my DMs and then you started a conversation, right? Right. So a lot of the beginning of a relationship today is phone based. And then it gets out of the probably out of the phone and then they start dating and they go out. Um if you're a teenager most likely because teenagers aren't getting their licenses very at, at the appropriate age now too, they're waiting. So that means if you're going on a date, lord knows who's taking you out. You have to t- ask your mom to drive you, but people are going out and then within the first month, you're probably sleeping together. Mm. But we're if we're looking at Love is Blind, let's look at Love is Blind, right? That age group, which is in their 30s. They're probably sleeping together, a one-night stand, or they try it before you buy it, right? So you mm. want to see how it is before you actually get married because that's going to be your partner for life. And then they'd probably go from dating probably two years, and then they decide, okay, the next step is let's move in together. Mm. Instead of getting married, let's move in together. Then they'd move in together and maybe they're together two, three, four years, whatever it looks like, because for some reason, living together, even though you are doing exactly what marriage is, which is living together in the same home, living together is much easier and it just works better for us than getting married. Mm -hmm. So instead of you date, right, it's, um, what is it like? Mary and Steve kissing in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G, first comes love, then comes marriage and baby. Now you're saying it's love then let's move in together, then maybe even a baby, and then there's marriage. Mm. So the order is is completely all over the place. Yeah. And that's the example that kids are getting today. Yeah. Kind of crazy. It is. Uh, we, you know, that's the thing that causes some of the older adults in the room to just scratch their heads, sit back and say, what are you doing? Yeah. Because all of that, you're you're giving away so much of something uh it's like the groceries you just give it all away yeah uh to, and then later ask somebody to pay for it because mm. when you're getting married marriage is just a whole buy in i just can't go into a marriage discounting the commitment that it's going to take them to make this relationship work mm-hmm. it's a whole buy in deal and you're in it hook line and sinker in marriage mm-hmm. you can't walk in and say well i'm a reserve, keep some of this reserve for myself and expect to have a hap- happy marriage. Mm. No, the reason marriage is so complicated and challenging is because you keep giving of yourself fully and expecting some kind of return from or response from the person. And you it's not usually it's usually it's not the response you want. So that that's just some of the conflicts. Yeah. That what goes into making marriage so challenging, but yet it's so rich in reward because marriage is about giving yourself fully, wholly, 100%, 100%. Dating, living together is 50-50. Yeah. And you can't be complete 50-50. No. Something's going to be lacking somewhere. It's got to be 100-100. Yeah. So what they think, what some young adults think, is going to bring them the true value of moving in together or better yet, what the relationship is going to give them by moving in together never gives them what ultimately yeah. they're looking for. And what's sad about that is you shortchange the relationship. And this could be somebody that you could go to long haul with, the mm. long run, run with this thing, keep yeah. it in play. It could be your future. But people don't know that because they're not going into it 100 100. They're yeah. only going into it with a part of themselves. Because when you move in, you're not one. Mm-hmm. you're not one single entity when mm-hmm. you just move in. When you're married, you're one. The yeah. Bible even says it. the two become one. Yeah. When you just move in together, you're not one. So you still got two individuals. Yeah. Two individuals, each paying their own part, uh, contributing their own part, uh, but it's not the whole. 
Yeah. So that that's more young adults. But what about from a teenage perspective? Because a lot of this that you're dealing with yeah. is the teenage. Yeah, I think it's, obviously you're not seeing 16-year-olds move in together, right? But you are seeing, and if we're looking at like what movies promote, you do see a lot of like the the first or like it's the first kiss and then it's even like giving of your virginity to somebody. So like you're seeing that happen at a younger age. You're seeing kids have sex at a younger age because that's like the pressures Gosh. that they're finding. Yeah. And and I'll tell you Coffee our, break. I know. <laughs> our youth group is is really awesome and our kids, like the kids that we have in our our church are incredible. Kiss. The kids that we have in our church are really incredible. But the environments that they're in, the schools that they're in, it is a very like common thing of like, oh, you go and make out and you go and give of yourself to somebody and you're very physical with them at a young age. Young and age. then if you're not doing that, you're seen as like, what is wrong with you? Mm. Like, this is just so normal. Yeah. And so the question, and this is something that I really wanted to ask you go. because you've done it. The question comes down to, okay, well, and you find all kids ask this. We probably asked you this. At what age can I start dating? Because kids yeah. want to know. I mean, you start having crushes when you're little and you think you have like your first crush is either a celebrity or maybe it's someone in your school and your your mind is already, like your heart's already opening up to that and you're kind of thinking about that. Um, but what is a good age or what is a good season? In youth group, I I kind of told yeah. them one thing, but I'm like, I want to I wanna know what. What did you tell them? So my advice was I did not choose an age. Because I personally Good. think if I gave them an age, then they're going to immediately mm -hmm. not listen to it. Yeah. But what I told them was, if you're Sorry. wanting to date, then you have to ask yourself two questions. Are you ready for marriage, number one? Are you ready for marriage? And number two, are you ready for heartbreak? Mm -hmm. Reason being is it's dating is going to end in those two ways. Mm -hmm. It's either going to end and you marry that person, or it's going to end and you're heartbroken from that person. Right. And you just have to be prepared for both of those options. Mm -hmm. So that was my stance on it. That's what the position that I took. You think it was a popular stance? I didn't get any backlash. No. <laughs> I did hear a sixth grade girl said, I'm ready for marriage. <laughs> <laughs> sixth grade girl. So Man. she really liked it. But... Well, that's great. I wish some of our young kids like that would already start dreaming of marriage. Yes. Yeah. You know, if I'm parent raising teenagers again, the complication that we have is society and culture says let them date when they want to date. And society also looks at parents who have kids that are dating and they think it's pretty normal. Mm -hmm. Let them date. It's, it's innocent. It's just a date. And at one point, that may have been the case. But I could tell you all the adult men that may listen to this podcast, they knew that when they were 15, 14, 15, 16, they knew there was one thing going through their brain, their mind. They're, with all that testosterone starting yeah. to rise itself up, you put them alone with somebody that they're attracted to, they're going to be tempted to want to partake of that. Mm -hmm. And the danger of that is, of course, somebody stepping into the responsibilities of a relationship way too soon. Yeah. Because sex is something that should be preserved for a yeah. committed relationship that is in marriage. So if if I'm asked to, you know, raise teenagers today, I think I'm looking at this. Number one is, are they responsible? Mm. If, because we, we, we don't want to put a, I'd like to say, you know what, it's 16. Yeah. Uh, for y'all... I used to think in terms of 16. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, nobody was really tempted at that point. You gave us 18, though. But I, I was going to say, so my mind shifted to 18. Yeah. Just be thinking about at 18, could you have a friend, you know, that's, you know, a guy as a girl? Could you have a friend? That's a guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could could you all see each other at church and hang out and stuff like that? Yeah, that was cool. Before, you know, when you're 16, 17. Yeah. Um, but then when you're 18, I felt like, okay, now is when it's good for you to step into a dating relationship because, and it goes back to that one question, are they responsible enough? Mm -hmm. Now, 
you were driving for two years, so you learned responsibility with a vehicle on the road yeah. and so forth. I would have rather you learn to be responsible with a car, and you may it's true blow a tire. We mm -hmm. can fix that. You may burn an engine because you didn't check the oil light. We can fix that. Mm -hmm. Losing your virginity, that's something I couldn't fix. Mm. So I'd rather, as a teenager, when I'm looking at them, thinking, let them be responsible with a car. Let me see how they live their life with yeah. a car before they get into a dating relationship. Yeah. Because in a dating relationship, you got to ask why they're getting into it. Do is it because they they need to feel like they are um, somebody? Yeah. Well, you shouldn't live your life needing the approval of another person. That no. makes you feel like you're somebody or not. Yeah. And if you start that as a young child, well, I want my 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 daughter to have a boyfriend because it it, it makes, makes their self good. esteem rise. Yeah. Well, that's the wrong wrong thing to do. Yeah. You don't want it to be that. You want it to be because she looks in the mirror and says, "Hey, I'm confident. Yep. I'm I'm happy with myself. Uh, I see that I'm created this way, and I'm going to be the best version of myself." Yeah. They don't need makeup to tell them they're looking no. beautiful. They don't need a guy to tell them they're looking beautiful. You know, they don't even need grades to tell them that they're somebody special. Yeah. They've got to find that in themselves, and when they're secure then they make better decisions. So here's here's my thought. I'm looking at my child as a teenager and I'm asking, are they responsible enough mm. to handle a relationship? Yeah. Are they responsible enough to say, yeah, I may feel these this sexual attraction yeah. to this opposite sex that I'm with in the car by myself. Yeah. But can I control myself? Yeah. Because responsibility is making right decisions based on choices that are before you. Yeah. And you control self. Self doesn't control you. So it's not just that I want them to go sit next to each other in a movie. No. It's I want them to be responsible. I want my child, yep. teenager, to be responsible with making right choices. Yeah. Which then means, how do I know they're responsible? Well, when I ask them to get off their phone. Yeah. Are they getting off their phone? If not, then I'm saying they're not responsible. It's true. They're not ready to handle a relationship if they can't handle the phone. No. Are, are they responsible by not play, playing games too much? Yeah. If they're playing more games than they are getting their homework done, yep. then I'm wondering, hey, they're not ready for this. No. Do they clean their room? Do they make their bed? Are they taking care of their little space? Yep. Do they contribute around the house with chores? Yeah. Are, are they responsible in things like that? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all showing me as a father, parent, whether my child's ready to handle something like a date. Yeah. So I would love to say 18, because that's a real sign of responsibility mm -hmm. age-wise, but that's what I'm looking at yeah. the whole way. So you want a date? Show me you're responsible. I really like that. And I think another sign for a good, like, okay, your, your child might be ready is how they communicate. So something that I mentioned even in on that Friday night with the youth is people say, like, communication is key for relationships, right? And they they frame it as communication is key with your partner. So with mm -hmm. the opposite sex, you have to communicate. And they're right. But I would even say communication with your community is also key about that relationship. So when I'm looking at a student or even my future kids, I would be looking at them saying, do they or, or do we have a relationship where they can feel like they can communicate with me and be honest with me about what they're going through? So something that I've always valued about our relationship and me and mom is that I have never, obviously you feel nervous sometimes when you're a kid, do I, what do I tell my parents? Even still now when I wanna tell you guys something. But when I tell you guys something, there's always a, a great understanding on both sides. And we're very open. Our family is an open book. We talk mm -hmm. about everything with each other. And I think that's a healthy thing for a, a, of a kid or a teenager. If they're wanting to date, then are they telling you things? Are they communicating with you? Are they having open dialogue? Like you said, if they're on their phone and you say, hey, can I see what's on your phone? 
are they willing to show their phone freely and to hand it over? Or are they freaking out because they need to hide it? Because if they're freaking out and wanting to hide things or not telling you things, right. they are not in the place no. to date. They, they are got not all these in the place. secret apps that are doing all this stuff. Or on their private phone. accounts. Dad, there are so many private accounts on Instagram that mm. parents don't even know about, that their kids have two or three different private accounts that they're able to message people and talk to their friends. And that's the thing. If your kids wanting to do that, if you have something that you're wanting to hide, it's not good for you. Never. So if they're hiding it from you, they're not in the place to be in a relationship mm -hmm. because that's just going to hurt them. They're going to hurt that person. There might be, your kid might be in a relationship and you don't even know about it because yeah. they're, they are full of just, I'm going to keep it to myself. Gabs, I wish parents could understand this. Your kids are feeding off of your, I, I, I want to be careful using this term because it may come off as very new agey, but your energy, mm -hmm. your flow as a parent. Yeah. If it's like a horse. If I walk up to a horse and I'm nervous, that horse picks up on it. Yep. It's crazy, right? But if I'm confident, then the horse responds and knows, yep. okay, wait a minute. Don't mess around with this person, right? Parents don't realize that there's something that their kids are picking up on. And mm -hmm. kids are bound. They're just, it, it's part of who they are. They're going to stretch the boundaries a little bit. Yeah. They're going to push up against them. It's in them. Later on in life, it may serve them well. It's up to a parent to make sure that they respect the boundaries. <clears throat> so if a mom and dad is very permissible yeah. in their approach to dating, to helping their kids with homework, school, um, permissible, meaning mm -hmm. just giving the kid permission to make their choices yeah, rather than the parent being strong and giving guidance to their kid yeah. with their phone and everything, then that's going to make a child, a teenager, push even harder yeah. to get their way. If a parent doesn't stand up and show them that, no, you may want your way, but you can't get your way right yeah. now, that's going to be a pattern that mm -hmm. a child carries into adulthood. Mm -hmm. And that's going to cause them some, tr some trouble. Yeah. So I believe the parent is the protection of every child. Mm. And they can't turn their child over too quickly to somebody else in a dating relationship. Yeah. You lose control. Yeah. One thing I, I just remember growing up, man, I start dating my first girlfriend and Papa and Grandmommy were jealous <laughs> because they felt like I wanted to spend more time with her family than I did my mm. own, them, as, as my parents. They thought I liked her their father more than I like my own father. And her <laughs> father was a, a football guy and Papa never was a football guy. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'd go over their house and the mom wanted to make me happy. So she was feeding me all the time oh my God. and giving me food and she was in catering. And so it was always food. And her father would be at the football game more than my own father. Oh my God. Because he would, he loved it. He'd want to talk to me what I did right, what I could have done better. And I loved hanging out. So when a parent starts to watch their kids date yeah you know the 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 kids just they fall head into it your teenager once they find somebody else their whole world yeah is like orbiting around this particular person yeah so then we have young kids in school they're thinking more of their boyfriend or girlfriend than they are their teacher in their class yeah so it gets their eyes off of that. If the kids want to be in sport, you think your kid's going to be really good and they're a part of a team. Mm -hmm. They're not thinking about that team near as much as they're thinking about that kid yeah. that they want to date. It it instinctually, they just go wholeheartedly into yeah. it. And the danger of that is because they haven't developed the decision-making ability, yes. knowing right from wrong, self-discipline, self-control, because they don't know that, they can go head over heels, full headlong into it, yep. and give something away of their emotions, their sexuality, yep. and such, and they can't get it back. Yep. Because you gave that stuff away. Why do that to a teenager? No. And why add experience that's not helpful to you? You know, like if you're dating after 18, that's good experience. You're, you're going to get into it. You might date somebody at 18, and it doesn't work out. And you know what? That's okay. <laughs> It's good experience for you. Don't mm -hmm. give away too much of yourself. Keep your boundaries. Like, 
do not sleep with that person and tell yourself that I am not going to go over this boundary, right? Mm -hmm. It's okay. You know, you have to deal with the heartbreak. You got to handle the heart, whatever it is. That's good experience because you can learn from that experience because it happened at a good season of your life. The experience that you have dating in high school, that's not good experience. That's not experience. That's not days or, or a history that you want in your life. You just don't want, and that's why we call it that you don't want that baggage. Yeah. It's it's worthless. It's yeah. not needed for your life. Well, I, I do like your advice. You got to either be ready for marriage mm -hmm. or heartbreak. Yeah. That was, that's really deep. And if we, if you don't mind, just expound a little on what you mean by that. Yeah. Okay. So how could a teenager be thinking about marriage? So I think... I think, first of all, we need to have a respect and reverence of marriage. And we have to understand that when you date, the goal of dating, and let's go back to what dating is about. Dating, it's a period of time where you're getting to know the opposite sex for the goal of marrying them, for the, the purpose of marrying them. You don't date to date. We say that all the time. You don't just date them just to have a boyfriend. You don't date them to have a girlfriend. You don't do it, like you said earlier, to make yourself feel good. You don't do it because you're the cool guy on campus because now you got a girlfriend. That's always going to end where you're hurting somebody. You date somebody because you are looking to be married one day. So that's where I, I say, I ask the question of, are you ready for marriage? The other side of it is, because it's 50-50 when you get into a relationship with somebody, is you will most likely experience heartbreak if you're getting into a relationship because you don't know if it's going to work out. It doesn't mean that the person is going to be bad or you're bad. It just, hey, things just don't work out all the time like you want. And so in your mind, those are two pivotal things that you're going to walk through in your life, marriage and your first heartbreak or any heartbreak. And you just want to be mindful when you're going into it. Ask yourself, can I marry this person? Can I see myself with this person? Can I see my life with them? Do our values align? You know, mm -hmm. does my does my dad like him? Does mm -hmm. my mom like him? Do my siblings like him? Do my friends like him? Ask yourself the question. Look at what he believes in and what he's striving for. Look at what you are. And and is it the same? Can it can it work together? Is it aligned? And ask yourself if you can see this person in your in your future. Once you've answered that question, and if it's a yes, right? Then ask yourself the second one. I don't think it's ask yourself one of these questions. I think you need to answer both of them mm -hmm. because it is 50-50 and you need to be prepared that it might not work out and you need to see if your heart is ready for that. And for girls out there, even for guys, yeah, if you are terrified of the thought of them not being in your life anymore, of them not texting you in the morning, of them not going out with you and them not giving you attention because that's how breakups work. You should not <laughs> talk to that person. Like yeah. the relationship's over, right? If that thought alone crumbles or or makes you crumble and yeah. you just freak out, then you should not get into that relationship because that might happen. Mm -hmm. And you don't want everything you've worked on. This is what I've struggled with. And you've told us girls this. We have worked on so much in our own lives to to be the girls that we are. We've worked on our on our confidence and our security in our lives. And we've had stupid tr struggles of who am I and what am I going to be? And we have found who we are. We're confident in ourselves. We're going to let one guy yep. come in and ruin that for us. Yep. We're going to let one guy tear down everything that I've built, everything that you've instilled in us, you and mom have instilled in us. No, I'm not going to do that. Now, at 16, I could not say that. Yeah. At 16, I would have crumbled. Thank God I was ugly at 16 years old. <laughs> and I was not in the season of you dating. You weren't ugly. Well, I had a couple extra pounds. You know, you remember yeah. that, Dad. Yeah. But thank God. pre-gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I like That makes me feel better about myself. Yeah. I was pre-gorgeous. Pre-gorgeous. And then it, I got gorgeous at like 21. It oh, took a long oh, I'm time. See that confidence coming you out of you? see that? I got gorgeous. I got gorgeous. Oh, no, but that's a t-shirt. I got gorgeous. But at 16 years <coughs> old, I wouldn't have been been able no to way. handle. I would have held on to a relationship just because there was confidence that he gave me. Mm -hmm. Just because he liked me. Coming from the wrong place. So that's where you have to ask. If you are if you are falling apart just at the thought of losing that person, Yeah, just be friends. Yeah. Uh, and so somebody says, well, they're only 14, so I can't expect them to be thinking of marriage or heartbreak. Well, at 14, be thinking about heartbreak. Yeah. Yes. But- 
That's why we say don't let them date at 14 or 15 yeah. or 16. I know it's it's going again against going against culture. It's going against maybe what somebody's um, you know upbringing was. Yeah. Uh, but it's you got to think long term today with our kids preserving and protecting, um, teaching them responsibility. Mm -hmm. What they do at this young age in their teens really does influence what happens when they get their 20s. Yeah. It's, it is a, uh, a great training ground mm -hmm. for them to get better, which in dating, it's just a big part of it. So you're not going to believe it, Gabby. 30 minutes has already passed. How do we do that? It's a good subject. It's a good subject. Now, we've done this early on, Mom and I, uh, a couple of seasons ago. We talked about dating from a parent's perspective. Yeah. But I'm glad that today you were able to add to it what a young adult would like to be said yeah. to the younger generation behind them. So that's uh, pretty much it. Anything else you want to say before we go? No, that is it. All right. Well, we want to thank you for watching another episode and listening to another episode of The Family Business with the Alessis, where family is everybody's business. Take care. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, and click on the notifications bell so you can be notified for all of our future videos. And if you love today's topic, we have plenty more. And you can click on this link right here to watch all of our videos so you can learn why family is everybody's business.